to part five of my uh, How to Service a KLR 650 mini series. As you can see, she's fairly naked now from parts one and two, which I'm still filming. Uh, so this is how to remove and replace the brake pads to the rear of the bike. I'm also going to bleed the system for you. So first off, I'll show you what we're going to need. Some brake fluid I've got here. This is Castrol's React Performance Stop 4 brake fluid. I highly recommend it. I've used it on the track and it's, uh, I've never boiled it, which is good. Um, we're going to need our bleed kit. So I just use a pipe and a jug. That's good enough for me. Um, we've obviously got our brake pads. So if you notice, the front and rear are pretty much the same, but they're actually directly opposite. So the one, if you're looking at it like that way, the hook on the right is actually the front. And the one, if you look and it's got the top and then over to the right, that is the rear. Then we're gonna need eight mil socket, 12 mil socket, Phillips screwdriver, preferably a uh, number two size, and a 10 millimeter spanner. Let's get started. So you probably noticed that um, I've actually put this up on the paddock stand. That's a personal choice. You can do this just as easy on the side stand. I like to do things up on the paddock stand. Makes it easier when you're bleeding the system. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get my eight millimeter socket and undo this bracket here. Take it all the way off and just rotate it round. Just leave it there on the pipe. Now something I've just realized is I actually forgot to tell you you're gonna need a five millimeter Allen key as well. So we need a five millimeter Allen key and you're gonna put that in it to each of these bolts just here. At this stage you can leave them just like that. Then we're gonna get our 12 millimeter socket just undo both of these bolts. And there we go. There you have your brake caliper off. Now if you just put a bit of pressure down, it'll actually become easier to get the pins out. So all I'm doing is just putting a bit of pressure on both pads, pushing against the springs, and that will actually allow us to remove both of our brake pads. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is two types of almost the same pads. So just offer up the one you've taken off to the correct one that you've bought, making sure that they haven't given you the front when it's the rear. Just match up the front and back. Making sure everything's in the same position. I'm happy I've got the right ones. Now you notice I put a towel down. This is purely to protect the tire and the wheel. So I'm just going to use some uh, brake cleaner to just spray in, inside, clean around all of the pistons, clean the spring plate at the bottom. I'll use a toothbrush and just some rag. Also take the time to clean your pins. Now before we push the pistons back, I'm actually gonna just release the uh, cap off the top of the reservoir. This is what we need our Phillips screwdriver for. Then there's this plate at the back, just lift that up. And rotate that round, that's what stops the lid coming off. Take the reservoir cap off. You can leave the rubber in there just for now. And what we've done there is when we push the pistons back, the level can rise a little bit. You'll actually notice in pushing the uh, piston back, the reservoir has raised the cap. And this is what I said about the liquid going back in. Now that will go back down when we bleed it. Now we're actually gonna put our old pads back in. Reason being is because we're going to use those to push the pistons back now that we know the pistons are clean. So just push them in. 
You may want to put the pins back in, it's up to you. Okay, that should be more than enough space. Now we're ready to put our pads back in, but before we do, we're just gonna use some copper grease. Get some on your finger. We're just gonna put some thin smear around the pistons. Making sure you don't put too much on. Also get some on the back of each pad. Really doesn't need to be a lot. And then finally, just run some up and down these as well. Once you're happy with your copper grease, start to put your pads back in. So the one without the tabs goes first. Get that in. Nice and tight up against the pistons. Then you have one, rotate all the way around. Hold them apart, push down against the spring. Start to work the pin through, making sure you keep the separation. Push it all the way through. And then do the other side. There you go, once it's all in and assembled, Start to start up your five millimeter Allen key pins. Just do it up by hand for now. Making sure the uh, pads stay apart. And we're gonna rotate that back over onto the disc. Bring that up. Hit your 12 millimeter bolts from earlier. Change back to your 8mm. Now you can tighten these back up. Now what you can do just to centre this back up, push a few times down here. And you'll notice that your reservoir has gone down again. Now to bleed the system, I'm actually gonna remove the rubber from the reservoir. And this is so we can keep an idea on how full the reservoir is. So this is our bleed nipple just on top. Pull the rubber cap off. Get a 10 millimeter ring spanner. Place it on just like that. And then of course your bleed hose and make sure it goes down as far as you can get it. Place the other end into your jug. I'm just gonna slowly turn that. Give the pedal a bit of a test. There you go. See some nasty orange stuff come out. Keep an eye on your reservoir. Not seeing any bubbles yet. Okay, just gonna top this up now, we're on the lower level. Pour it in nice and slow, not to create bubbles. Still not had any bubbles. Just give it a little test. It certainly feels good. So I'm just gonna finish off a couple more times. Just making sure there's no bubbles. It's 
starting to see a slightly different colour come through now, so I'm confident that that's the new fluid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the lever down and tighten the nipple back up. Then release the lever and just top up the fluid. Leave it on the upper limit, making sure you're not over it. Pull your pipe off. You might want to just give that a quick wipe. There we go. That's all bled. Brake feels good. Now for the finishing touch, once you've got it just on your upper level, so I've got it perfectly level with that, put the rubber back in, get that all the way home, cap back on. Be sure not to break this, so hold both top and bottom. Put the locking plate back on, so the tabs actually come forward of these two tabs. Get the protector grill, do that back up. There you go, complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free to check out any of the other parts in this mini series, or in fact, any of my other videos on the channel. If you found this helpful, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe.